Welcome to New Realities. My name is Alan Steinfeld. And part of this program is investigating how we can be healthier people physically, mentally, spiritually. But today we're going to focus mostly on the health benefits, and that will include everything else. So I have with me today Dr. Reed Winnick for the New York Dentistry for Health in New York, and he is started a clinic of four teeth for as a dentist which is the cleanest and the greenest place I've been and he has been as far as taking care of teeth and he's dedicated to health as a as a whole body approach not just the teeth so he he has lots of other facilities there that surround the care of the teeth and we're going to go into that uh, and we're also going to talk about his story and how it was his own life's journey that brought him to this understanding of holistic health. So, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Was that a good introduction? It was perfect. Was it? Because, you know, of course you said you always wanted to be a dentist, but then your own body, you're taking care of your own system and and finding out what worked for you and not just going with what the mainstream said I think is a very important story for people to hear. Right. So let's start from the beginning. There you were. Okay. <laughs> there you were. <clears throat> no, you wanted to be, a, you knew, you always knew you wanted to be a dentist. Right. Even when I was in high school, I, I wanted to be a dentist. Right. But, and you were just going to be a regular mainstream dentist. You wanted to fix teeth, and, and then you had these health issues mm -hmm. that were coinciding along with your desire to be a dentist. So what were the health issues, if you want? Okay. So um, besides the fact that I always wanted to be a dentist, I could have always wanted to be anything. But it just so happens I wanted to be a dentist so I can be in the medical world. Okay. You, you know, I'm only asking you this because I think when people realize what you've been through, to heal yourself holistically, they get how dedicated you are mm -hmm. to a bigger system. Mm -hmm. So, please. Okay. Well, so, as a young child growing up, I yeah. was always having stomach aches, I was always constipated, mm -hmm. and I was always having pain when I was eating my, my lunch or my dinner. Uh -huh. And I went the traditional route back then when you go to your doctor and they say, well, take, you know, either mineral oil or Senecot and to work with the constipation. But that was my whole life, and I just dealt with it. And if I went to the bathroom three times a week, I was thrilled, and that wow. was just the way it was. No one in that time ever said Said, well, it might be what you're eating or diet. They never, they did they ever? Skip? No, no, that wasn't mm. even. And and I had a, I don't know, I, I had a delicious diet. It was full of cookies and <laughs> and candy and you know the, everything that you would avoid today if you were looking to have a healthy diet. Um, I grew up on you know tons of juice and mm -hmm. soda. You know mm -hmm. everything that typical American typical diet, American pizza diet. and American cheese and exactly. And you just had this stomach issue that. You had to just live Deal with it. Right. Yeah. Because it was my issue. No one else in my family had it. So that was just what I was dealt with. Um, so I went on. And then when I went to college uh, in the early 1979, early 80s, um, the same issues would flare up and I would have some problems, but we just dealt with it, you know? Um, you dealt with it how? Just by um, basically just dealing with the fact that I have pain. There's not much I can do you about it. You just dealt with the pain and went on with your right. life. You know, when you have these minor little symptoms, you don't deal with anything until it becomes a bigger problem, mm -hmm. and then they say, oh, you have this. Mm -hmm. So the early warning signs were probably there, but nobody was picking them up. Mm -hmm. I know I wasn't. My parents weren't. And it's not that they weren't there for me. They just didn't know what to do. Right. Um, so when I was in... Um, I came home my freshman year of college, 1980, and I was home for about a week, and I had a tremendous stomach ache. This is after a whole year of my freshman year in school. Stomach aches, you mean there was pain in your abdominal region? So I'm talking about like having a knife being jabbed in and turned. Wow. I mean, that's the kind of stomach aches I would have. Wow. Um, and so I woke my parents up, and they took me to the hospital, and I was uh, brought to the emergency room, and they did a, a, an x-ray, and this, the resident came in and said, you know, your x-ray looks fine, mm -hmm. but it seems that your appendix, you have a, appendicitis, we should go in and remove your appendix. 
I'm like, okay, great. So they did like an emergency kind of surgery. They mm -hmm. took my appendix out. And when I woke up, I spoke to the uh, gastroenterologist, uh -huh. which I didn't know what that was until that day. But you were already familiar, you were already in medical school, not no, really. I was you an weren't, undergraduate. You I was, weren't getting I was still in college. Okay. So you talked to the gastroenterologist, and what did right. he say? And so he said, well, your appendix was fine, oh. but, we, but we saw your ileum was inflamed, so we, which is part of your small intestine. So we cleaned that up. And but we took your appendix out just so we know that won't be a problem in the future. And they just did it anyway. Yeah. Well, if you read the medical books, it says appendicitis can mimic Crohn's disease, so um, it's good to have it removed. So you had Crohn's. Well, that's okay. what it's coming. Okay. 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 So, but he then said to me, "You've got Crohn's disease." He told you you had he, Crohn's right. by looking at looking your... at when I was open. Crohn's disease is an irritable bowel syndrome, right? Basically, right, right. so my intestines were all inflamed. So then, from that point on, I was being managed by this doctor from um, in Long Island, who was a specialist in the area, who developed all. All these instruments to go up that area and look at it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was on uh, a zulfidine and prednisone and a gram of amoxicillin every day. And, and you were going to be on that the rest of your life? The rest of my life. This wow. is how it's being managed. And the only diet restrictions they give you is you can't have roughage. Roughage being? Like raw salads or vegetables that aren't cooked. Because uh, that would irritate the... Or, or like apples, because it it's too rough and you, your opening is constricted and it would irritate your, your intestinal tract. Wow. So they want to keep, away, you keep you away from all that, which is kind of the opposite of what you would consider doing. Mm -hmm. So I went through now college on this program and, mm -hmm. you know, I was doing okay, but I still right. had to watch what I ate and I still had these ongoing stomach aches and things like that. Um, at one point, I had to take off a part of a semester and go back during the summer to make up because I still wasn't as strong as the average student was. Right. Um, so um, and then I applied to dental school, and um, actually, I started at the, uni the um, University of Pennsylvania. And my doctor at the time said to me, you know, are you sure you want to go? And I said, I don't want to miss a year of school. I want right. to find. Well, I went and I basically lasted five weeks. Wow. Um, I would, while I was in school, um, if I, I couldn't even eat a meal, a full meal. I would sit, if I had like a bowl of soup mm -hmm. on the way back to school, and I had to eat in a restaurant. I couldn't eat regular f school food because it was too limiting. So I would like throw up like, in the back of a building. I just wow. couldn't hold anything down. I couldn't sleep at night because the pain would keep me up. And and this was just an aggravation of the inf oh, inflammation. Yeah. I mean, whatever I was doing, that treatment I was on wasn't working for me at the time. Oh. Um, so, but it t so five weeks later, I go home and I, and I basically mm -hmm. drop out of school. Mm -hmm. I now weigh like 128 pounds. What year are you in at this point? 19. 83. You're in your undergraduate. I'm in my freshman year of okay. dental school. Dental school, right. Right. So I come home, I weigh 120, 128 pounds. Right. I go to a new doctor who's a specialist in New York City. He changes my program. He gives me more drugs, different drugs. He gives you different drugs. Those old drugs weren't working, but he still doesn't deal with no. diet. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so now I take the year off just to recover, uh -huh. and now I start um, my freshman year in 1984 at uh, New York University here in the city. Okay. I was close to my family. I was close to my doctor. It was a good thing to do, mm -hmm. and I did that. But I was still being managed with um, the medication. My diet hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. You know, my breakfast was a donut and chocolate milk. You and know. it never occurred to you to possibly change your intake of food, certain foods? Alan, I was going to the best doctors in the city. And if they didn't say it... Who was going to say it? People from around the world go to these doctors. They come here uh -huh. for their... So I'm like, who knows better? Right. You know? So they... That is, isn't, doesn't that shock you now, looking back? Yeah. It, well, yes, because the information is not, like, hidden in some special book. Right. It's out there that anyone is open and available to see. Right. The question is, well, why are they not seeing it? What's what's missing? Yeah, that's what's the disconnect? That's shocking. That's shocking. That's shocking. That the best doctors in the world. Right. And so we'll go into what the disconnect. But go ahead, fin okay. finish. Where so now it's. I think it's probably my my second or third year of dental school. And now, see what happens is they don't do surgery, they don't remove anything mm -hmm. until they see that you'll get like an abscess or something that's 
possible more dangerous than your symptoms because they know even if they do surgery, the problem will come back. They do with Crohn's disease. Right. So anyhow, so now I have an abscess developing inside my intestines. Wow. That could be a major problem. So I go in for surgery and they cut out like a, a foot of my small intestine. Wow. Well, I can tell you, in the hospital, I gained a pound because to me, I was able to eat for the first time in years with no pain. So whatever they were giving me was tasting delicious. Uh -huh. And I finally was able to eat and I was like, I should have done this three years ago. I was so thrilled with how great I felt. So anyhow, so then I went on my way and I'm eating just like uh, I was eating before, but now I had less of a 12 feet, you know, one foot less. <laughs> so things are great. Um, so now I, I graduate dental school, I do my residency, now I'm working on my own in the, in the dental practice, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm starting to get symptoms. Okay. And the symptoms are um, fatigue, I'm starting to get uh, night sweats. Now, people have heard of you sweat, but mm -hmm. when you have night sweats, I was like changing my t-shirt seven times because they were so wet. This was um, a complication to the original issue. You, you hadn't had those conditions before. I've never had those conditions before. Oh, I see. So, so they, don't, they don't know why I was having them. Right. All I know is something was going on. Right. Okay. And um, when I was working, I would work for an hour and I would have to sleep for two hours. Wow. Um, when I was, but talking about your, your, your sweating, um, I would have to put like a bounty towel under my arm wow. because my whole entire shirt down to my pants would be wet from my perspiring, my whole wow. body. So I was, I was, something was going on. Yeah. I went to my doctor, yeah, the great ones, <laughs> and I told him I was sweating. He said, well, you should change your deodorant. And I'm like, you know, I already used Degree. You can't get better than, than Degree deodorant. That, that doesn't even make sense, that you're sweating and you should change your deodorant. I mean, that's, I mean, it's frustrating it just is. listening to that comment. I, well, especially today. <laughs> Uh, so, but what happened was it turned out that the infection had went into my rectum. Ooh. So now you need to go for rectal surgery. Oh. And it's not fun to discuss and it's not <laughs> fun to have and it's a, it's a, well I can say it takes six months to recover from rectal surgery. Wow. So anyhow, so let's just say I had the rectal surgery and six months later, okay. almost to the day, all my symptoms are coming back again. Again. Again, the same thing. And I can hardly function. I'm on disability now. I'm out of work most w of the were day. Were you really emotionally frustrated and upset with it all, too? I mean... Yeah. I'd mm -hmm. say, you know, you want to do something. You want to get your career going. You yeah. want to do your dentistry. And yeah. you can't. You can't wow. do... You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a very go-get-it kind of person. Yeah. I want to be able to do something. Wow. So it's frustrating not being able to... You know, to say to someone you, you, you have to sleep for two hours during the day is wow. kind of frustrating. So it started to come back even after all these... Cert so, okay. Yeah. So, so now I decided to go to a different hospital mm -hmm. where they have a better procedure, where they go higher up in the rectum and they do a whole bunch of other wow. stuff. So, but now it's another six months but now some recovering and all the symptoms again wow. have gone away and things are going good. Wait, you did another surgery? You said? Yeah. Oh, you did because, a second rectal surgery? Right, because was, everything was coming back, oh. you know, wow. and as as the, see, I didn't know I had, all the symptoms were gone because with, with the rectal surgery, you have this big hole in your butt, so all the, everything is coming out, so there's nothing backing up. Oh. Now that the hole closes up, as it heals, it heals. Oh. It's now there's no uh, lead, get you know no place for the, everything to go, so now it's back in my system. Oh. So now I go for a surgery with a new person. Um, and it's a now another six months. So now I'm healing and I'm doing all this kind of stuff. You're, you're like in the war zone. It's like, this is... Yeah, this is serious. Wounding, yeah. a deep uh, physical, uh, that's uh, awful. Yeah, and you, this, is, this is the brief, of the, the, I know. the brief version. <laughs> Anyhow, so almost so, now I'm starting to feel better and I have a very strong passion for treating patients who have TMJ, you know, jaw joint problems mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. So I belong to an academy and I wanted to go to my academy meeting, which I missed the last year. So my wife and I had plans to go to Washington, D.C., where this academy meeting is. Well, just to further your dental... Yeah, um, just to learn how to treat TMJ patients. Right, okay. Okay. And almost a week before we go away, all my symptoms start coming back again. Again, even after this... Even second surgery. And when I, I couldn't... So I said, listen, 
I'm going away. So I saw my doctor, and he's like, well, here's your choices. We can do another surgery. We can put you on some other medications, mm -hmm. like 6-MP, which they give the kidney patients, and other immune suppressive type wow. of drugs, or we could do another surgery, but this time it'll be higher up. Oh my God. You'll have to wear a diaper because you won't have be able to hold your bowel movement. For the rest of your life? For the rest life? of my life. Oh my God. And this is your choice. And I said, let me think about it. <laughs> so I decided to go to my TMJ meeting yes. with my wife, and at this meeting, I, you know, I had a, when we had time off, I couldn't even go shopping with my wife. I couldn't walk around the mall. I just had to sit and rest. That's just how debilitated I was wow. getting again. And the first day of the meeting, there was these two doctors, one from Germany, one from Seattle, and they were talking about, as TMJ dentists, how yeah. to treat a chronic pain patient. Uh -huh. So they bring up um, Crohn's disease, and they bring up gluten, Mm -hmm. as an irritant causing Crohn's disease. And I'm like, what's gluten? I yeah. never heard of this word. Uh -huh. And I'm a doctor. I still never heard of this word. Right. And I went to the best doctors in and they the never world. <laughs> they never heard it. They never told me of this word. So I go up to her after the seminar, mm -hmm. and I said, what's gluten? And she says, it's, 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 a, it's found in white flour and grains and weed and rye, you know, and bar barley. Mm -hmm. and." And she goes, it's an allergen, and people who have Crohn's disease are, are commonly allergic to this. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, so I, I give her my story in yeah. five minutes, and she basically says, well, she pulls my arm down, and she pushes on it, she does yeah. kinesiology. Can you, yeah. She taps on my head, she taps on my back doing like NET, like an emotional release right. technique, and she says, you have an allergy to gluten. Let's just stop eating gluten. And you'll be fine. And you'll be fine. Right, so <laughs> I had to go to my wife and say, "What's where's gluten found in?" You know, as I'm walking in with pretzels because I don't know what gluten it was. You know, right. and she's, well, "You can't eat those. There's gluten." In them. I'm like, "Oh!" So I stopped eating. Now my diet, while I was on the program with all these other doctors, right. every night, big bowl of pasta because pasta is good for you. Because it's easy to digest. Is right, that, but it's also carbs and it's healthy. You know, American diet pasta is really wow. healthy. So I'm eating this every night. Full of gluten. Full of gluten, wow. you know. So um, in five days, all my pain, all my drainage, all my night sweats, all my uh, low-grade fever, all my loose bowels, everything clears up. Wow. So I call my doctor up and I say, hey, doctor, you know, I just went to somebody and, mm -hmm. and they said I have an allergy to gluten and I feel better. So he says to me, well, Reed, you're in, you're in denial. <laughs> And I said, you know, doctor, I'm not the denying type. It's either black or white. I know. Either you're in pain or you're not. I know how I feel, you know? So it's, your doctor said that. Right. That's so he said, well, come on in, let me take a look. Uh -huh. So I come in, and he looks at me. He says, no, you, you're doing, it looks like you're doing better. He goes, maybe you've got celiac. I go, what's that? Mm -hmm. He goes, that's what babies get. If they have like an allergy to wheat when they're infants, uh -huh. they cry a lot and they have stomach pain, they have uh -huh. gas. Maybe you've got sprue, which is another word for celiac. Uh -huh. And I said, okay. He goes, well, let's do a duodenal biopsy. I'm like, what's that? Well, they do like a little tube and they take out a little snippet of your duodenum and they t send it to a lab oh and God. they see if you have an allergy to gluten. So now it's like a, 10 days later or two weeks later, I come back again. Wait, did you do the biopsy? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, you did do it because your doctor said. I'm a doctor. I mean, this, what else should I do? I mean, even after he never ever mentioned the allergy to even yeah. no so so you do okay you do right. the biopsy wow right. you were really right and what i know from today by the way yeah okay the best way to test an allergen is to eliminate it and then reintroduce it 2 weeks later see if your symptoms come back and then you know if you have an allergy to something okay so so he, so the results come back right right and it's negative you don't have I you don't, don't have celiac, I don't have sprue. But he looks at me and he says, well, you're doing better than even when I saw you two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's working, you might as well keep doing and it. And that'll be $1,000. Right. <laughs> well, you took insurance. Okay. No. okay. But, but he turned to my wife, who he also treated for esophageal reflux and constipation, mm -hmm. and he said, well, you don't need to go on a gluten-free diet because you don't have the same problems that Reed has. And I'm like, Yes, she does. She's just not at the state I'm in. The girl's right. miserable. She has right. reflux and she can't move uh -huh. up. I'm like, why not? Isn't it obvious that there's an issue going on here that needs to be addressed? This was a wake-up call for you. I mean, this was like you're starting to say something's wrong with the mainstream if they're not looking at 
these other issues. Right. I mean, you, right, it but was, now, now it's just I'm on the fringe of understanding. But you're starting to, like, wake up to something, right? Something's starting to click in here, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, well, there's a big, something's going on, and why would one person tell me one thing who got me well, and this other person tell me the, the opposite from my spouse? not getting you well. Right. Who should you look to that? You know, do you want to go to a doctor that has big files or little files? Right. Because the big files are big problems. Little files, they get them quick, healed quickly. You know, it's interesting you should tell me that. We should bring this up uh, as a quick aside. Uh, no, please. In, my, in, in, the, in the, my wellness dental center, I have a color acupuncturist. He does color, color puncture. Right. Yeah. And we have, he gets, he's, he's so busy, he gets referrals from uh, one of the local holistic pediatricians. Mm -hmm. And I was in the office with him yesterday talking about, he goes, things are going great. He goes, but I need more patients because they're getting well so quick <laughs> that I need to have more patients from, you know, come, you need to get another doctor to refer right, to us. Right. And that's just the way it is. Well, you actually, get you well quick. No, I know. I have but no problem with that. Of course, the other side of it is when we were in acupuncture, when I was in acupuncture school, you, they say, oh, one treatment patient never come back, patient must be better when they maybe just never came back, <laughs> you know? Right. But, all right, so getting back to where you were, so okay. you start, something starts okay. to click. Right, so um, so my wife and I, we actually travel to Seattle. We take a plane to be a patient. To see this woman who and, is... Right, to see this woman so she can treat me. So mm -hmm. if patients ever say to me, I live in Connecticut and I can't come to New York, I mm -hmm. say, well, if it's important enough, you'll go to Seattle. Right. So New York is not so far from Connecticut. Right. Anyhow, so we went to Seattle. She treated me in her office. She did a whole bunch of things which... Uh, were very new to me, uh -huh. um, and she gave me a program to take home. Mm -hmm. But we also stayed and we took their seminar, mm -hmm. and it, it was, was a kind of um, kinesiology type of. Um, no, this was actually well. They do kinesiology, and they have, uh -huh. and I've taken their other seminars on uh -huh. kinesiology. But they, it was basically it's a it's, it's a German therapy called neural therapy, uh -huh. and they were teaching it without needles, so uh -huh. that you can use lasers and other modalities, so you don't have to inject somebody. So it was great for a dentist to learn because right. we can inject different parts right. of the body, so it gave us the ability to, to do that. However, but he, it was two and a half days mm. of all this new paradigm of medicine, mm. you know, and how to treat chronic pain, and it was amazing what I've learned considering the fact that it went against almost everything we learned in dental school as medicine, plus it added this whole other component of mm -hmm. nutrition and, mm. and eating. And well, But let's take a little aside and talk about these two paradigms. Just just mm -hmm. so the audience knows. So there's the one paradigm says you, you treat things with drugs or surgery, right? Mm -hmm. And there's the new paradigm that you learned that says what? How would you okay. describe it? Well, see, well, the drug surgery paradigm is the let's wait for you to get sick and then we'll treat it. Right. Okay. The other paradigm is, well, the, you know, people will spend thousands and thousands of dollars once they get sick to get well, mm -hmm. but they won't invest a hundred dollars a month to stay well. Right. So first of all, it's education. Right. You know, it's a lot more easy to keep you well when you're well than mm -hmm. when you're sick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you're, if, you know, when someone now jumps and they have a, a chronic illness, no matter what it is, you can't just say, well, I'll give you um, this vitamin, or let's just do acupuncture. Mm -hmm. What you do is you have to realize that a chronic pain patient has four different um, disciplines that would benefit them. Okay, mm -hmm. so one one is is the the biochemical, which is mm -hmm. the vitamin eating right. nutrient thing. Another thing is the structural, because if your body isn't aligned properly, if it's not balanced, you're mm -hmm. not. Your nerves aren't functioning properly, right. and that affects your other organs and everything. Mm -hmm. The other is the electrical system, mm -hmm. or your frequencies, mm -hmm. and the and and the third is the, the emotions. Mm -hmm. Your emotional the stress support. level. Your stress level, but also whatever is emotionally holding you back mm -hmm. that could be released not by going and talking about it for a half an hour, mm -hmm. but applying either like uh, homeopathic remedies or other types of. Uh, frequency type emotional releasing like or body deep tissue yeah deep tissue release okay yeah, that's kind of a you know and modality. so but you deep you delve into the emotional that clears up so much mm -hmm. you know and I mean there are some people who, who want to be sick because mm -hmm. they get that gain get attention. from attention like, exactly so you brought all these now into your practice these mm -hmm. four different types of modalities but let's go back to that point where the you know you're taking these courses in Seattle and you're starting to st tap into the new <coughs> paradigm right 
and then you're coming back to New York, and how do you, what changes for you? <clears throat> okay, so, so I came back to, my, to New York, and um, there was a New York Magazine article about a, a holistic doctor in the city of that he just opened up a big center, mm -hmm. and my dad said, why don't you go talk to him? Mm -hmm. So I went to speak to him, and I said, how do I become a holistic dentist? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you go take Hal Huggins' course, who's a dentist in uh, Colorado who's taught hundreds of dentists mm -hmm. on this mercury detoxification protocol. Okay. So I go to his seminar. It's like, it's like two, three-and-a-half-day seminars. I take almost every back-to-back, -back, and I learn what it takes to build a wellness dental center in terms of the environment and how to keep the air mm -hmm. clean and what to do and how to... Um, uh, also protect the patients uh -huh. during the treatment so they don't get more mercury in their system right. when it's removed because if you know they say well you get more mercury when it's removed and then if you just leave it alone hmm. that's true but if you, if you remove it properly and safely and you contain it mm -hmm. then it's you don't get more mercury in your system mm -hmm. but when it's removed was that already sort of a click that the mercury was affecting you uh, that because you're taught to use mercury in schools, right? Right. And then suddenly someone says mercury is not not good for you. Right. What was? How did you connect those two pieces? Well, you know, w w when I came home, I took out all my mercury fillings. Right. Um, I undid my bridge work here because it was a, a blocking my cranium from uh -huh. a cranial point of view. So I I can say that the gluten-free diet was the biggest change in my life. Right. But then, do you remember what we discussed the four different disciplines? Yes. I addressed all those four different disciplines. And yes. that's what then got me to the next level because from that point on, I then saw an Ayurvedic doctor mm -hmm. who put me on a detox program for parasites and to clean my gut up because of all the years mm -hmm. of um, antibiotics that I was on. Mm -hmm. So I kept going and having more work done for the internal system, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get me healthy. What, but were you just amazed that they're not teaching this in medical schools and dental schools that, look, you've had, I would say, a miraculous recovery from where you were to where you became. Mm -hmm. And what was your feeling about the education mm -hmm. behind this in the mainstream? You know, my feeling was that the education got me to a certain place mm -hmm. and for whatever reason I was blessed to get to this other place mm -hmm. and it was really a my TMJ Academy that got me here mm -hmm. which was part of my dental education mm -hmm. so if I didn't become a dentist I don't know if I would have ever found oh. this whole paradigm right. so I really you know it was a dentist that introduced me to these people Right. So, right. listen, there's dentists and then there are dentists. There's right, but you know, you saved your life, I would say you saved your and you're saving um, other people's lives as well because of... I'm not saving anyone's Well, life. you're helping them heal. I'm not what? helping anyone heal. Oh, oh, you're not? What I'm doing is giving people information. Oh, okay. Because okay. here's the key to anything you get out of today, and this is the whole point of me being here. Okay. What I say means nothing. What, what's really important is what you do with the information. You have to take action and change your life, change your road, do something. If you realize that you're following the same mundane cycle and it's not working, then realize that maybe you should change and do something different and take action on some new information. And that's what I did. I, remember, here I'm, I'm a doctor. Right. You know, <laughs> nine years of education and some lady who I never met pushed down on my arm mm -hmm. and said, you have this problem. I didn't look at her and say, oh, you're a nut. I right. said, well, this is interesting. Mm. Let me see what happens. Well, let me give it a chance. Yeah. You know, how am I going to explain it to the genius doctor when I get back to New York? Yeah. That was my next thing. You know, I didn't tell him what I did because <laughs> he'll think I'm a bigger kook. <laughs> but reality is, I... For whatever reason, I just had enough faith to say, you know what, I don't want to be this way anymore and let me move on. Mm. And, it, and it happened. And so this is what you suggest to people to just be open. I mean, there are kooks out there. There are people, things that don't work. Of and, course. And so... See, I was, I, well, see yeah. I was blessed because when I, you know, I met these people through my academy who I mm. trusted. Right. I knew the, the directors of the academy. They all use these people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and these aren't young people in the academy. They're all in their 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. and they're all vibrant people. So mm -hmm. there's something going on there. Mm -hmm. You know, they had all their mercury out. So there's something, and these are mainstream people. Mm. Um, when I came back to New York, I was also, I met some great practitioners. Mm -hmm. and. 
but what happened was I kept every month going away and studying from these doctors in Seattle mm -hmm. and other doctors, so I knew what protocols were working and what protocols weren't working. So when I came back to New York and a patient would come to my office and they would say, I'm doing this and I'm seeing this doctor, I'd go, okay, fine, let me call up your doctor and see what they're doing. Right. Not that I knew everything that they were doing, but I understood what had to be done right. and I can then guide my patients. So what I do today, yeah. I still go to all these educational seminars. I'm not being a doctor, right. but I know how to get you well. I know who to go to. So if they say I'm going to so-and-so, I'm like, okay, try it for a few months, see how, you, mm. you, how it's going. If it's working, great. If not, I'll give you some other advice. Right. advice. But I think it's so important that you've incorporated all this information into your dental practice because you talk about how the teeth affect the systems of the body. It, it, the, it's all systemic. Right. What happens in the teeth can affect everything else. Right. So well, my my dream is to see when we my dream is to have what we have in our center throughout the whole country because I believe that the future of dentistry is that the dentist is the gateway mm. to the patient's overall health because the mouth acts like a barometer mm -hmm. and it picks up diseases and problems way before you see it in the rest of the body. Right. So if we can know how to identify those issues in the mouth, yeah. we can then prevent further disease and problems for the patients 10 years down the road. So when the patients walk into the office, first of all, um, when we built the office, it was built using sustainable principles, meaning um, that we use uh, bamboo flooring, the paint is non-toxic, the uh, lighting is, is, is a special lighting, um, the um, the wood has no formaldehyde mm -hmm. in it. The, um, uh, the, what do you call the stuffing that's in the walls, the installation right. in the walls, it's blue denim. Huh. So it's really built as a green and sustainable type of office. Mm -hmm. Why? Because A, we treat a lot of chemically sensitive patients. Yeah. Uh, B, we want a good environment for the team who's working there so we stay healthy. Mm -hmm. um, no one wears perfume in our, in our office. We right. have probably eight women and there's no perfume right. because people coming in are, are sensitive so we want to keep it a very clean environment. Um, so that's just the working environment. Yeah. Um, it's probably the, one of the biggest green dental offices in, in, a, in a major city in the country. Mm -hmm. um, when the patient comes in, we, they primarily would see me first for, for an hour. Mm -hmm. We do all the basic dental um, procedures, x -rays. the x-rays, mm -hmm. but we do digital x-rays. Uh -huh. um, and so because digital x-rays are like 90% less radiation. Mm -hmm. okay. You know what you also did in your office that I never had done was test the depth of the um, Gums. gum. Mm -hmm. And I never had that done before right. in any dentist. So you see how how good a shape each tooth is in in relationship to the gum. Right. Well, um, that's great um, yeah. because it gives us an indicator. You can't measure gum disease by an x-ray. You need to actually measure the pockets, and that gives us a view of your past. Right. Which is good because you want to know where you are right. and where you've been. However, I want to know what's happening today, right now. Okay. So another test that we do is we actually take a sample of the bacteria Mm -hmm. Under the gum, we put it under a little microscope slide, right. and we look at it. It's like doing a culture. Mm -hmm. So, because we know that the bacteria under your gums could cause the bone loss, mm. plus all the other systemic illnesses we discussed earlier uh -huh. today. So, I want to be able to identify that. Just looking, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. Almost like if you went to a, uh, let's say you had a child and they went to a mainstream doctor, mm -hmm. right? And the tonsils were red and the doctor looked in and said, oh, they're red and inflamed. Well, your gums are red and inflamed, right? Mm -hmm. um, he says, well, before we treat it, let's do a culture. Maybe he has strep throat. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not just going to go and treat it because if he does a culture and it comes back negative for any bacteria, he's not going to give an antibiotic. Right. He's going to say, okay, we, maybe it's viral. Yes. So let's do something, nothing. But so you look at see what bacteria is in the gums. We look to see what bacteria is in the gums, but we can then decide is it just a bacterial problem or is it a nutritional problem? Mm -hmm. What is really going on? Okay. And then you give the protocol to treat those Right. Well, bacteria. then they see the hygienist for an hour and a half. I see. And then they have a whole perio wellness evaluation there. We use a special program called Strawberry, which is like a health assessment calculator. Mm -hmm. It has like 100 questions and gives us, and we discussed earlier, the biochemical chemical, the mm -hmm. structural, and nutritional. Mm -hmm. It gives us a breakdown of the patient, where they're weakest in each area. Mm -hmm. So now we know where to go 
even further with them, whether mm -hmm. we do it in the office or we send them out to one of our wellness providers that we te we've teamed up with in the city. I see. So from the get-go, we have a direction of where we're going, mm -hmm. okay? Then we'll start discussing teeth in terms of if they have any cavities or fillings or mm -hmm. replacement, and then we decide what bio compatible materials we would use, mm -hmm. and that's a whole another discussion. And then do you take all this information and assess the person's uh, overall health state? Sure, because somebody who comes in with um, a history of heart disease, yeah. or someone who has a uh, family history of their father had a heart disease, or someone has cancer presently, mm -hmm. or someone has diabetes, or mm -hmm. someone is really a, a healthy person, and um, they all get treated differently. Right. So now, here's a scenario. A young 25-year-old girl comes in. Yes. Or woman, right? And perfect, pristine gums. You do a slide on her, and she's loaded with, with spirochetes, which can cause gum disease. Little bacteria under the gum, right. yeah. So if you didn't do that, you wouldn't know she has a problem and uh -huh. needs a six-week follow-up and a change. When we talk about changing, yeah. changing her protocol, because it's not working. Right. So, But if she would have went to the old paradigm of dentistry, which we used to do years ago, mm -hmm. she would come in, oh, your teeth look great, we'll give you a little shiny, a little cleaning, see in six months. Uh -huh. But then six months go by, she comes back, oh, you have a pocket. Uh -huh. Why did that happen? Well, because the bacteria was never addressed. Oh. And gum disease is transferable from kissing. Oh. Okay? okay. So she may have been cleaned up today, but eight weeks later, she's kissing <laughs> someone again, and they weren't cleaned up. Mm. Now you have uh, this so whole you problem going on. You, so, yeah, you have to be careful who you kiss. Uh, I mean, yes, yeah, so we have a safe kiss program. You do? Of course. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, very important. You know, But so when the patients go through the procedure now with the hygienist before they even start mm -hmm. with them and start poking around and, and doing a more in-depth mm -hmm. uh, gum evaluation. They use, uh, they, they ozonate the gums so the infection isn't pushed around mm -hmm. the bloodstream from the start. Wow. You know, it's so important what you're doing to maintain the overall health of the human being. Uh, are you encouraging other dentists to go in this direction? Because most mm -hmm. most of them haven't. I mean, we are. And I actually, I, I just was part of a seminar about a month ago mm -hmm. uh, to a bunch of dentists, explaining mm -hmm. to them what you can do in today's dental practice for the future and how important it is because now we're the go-to guys. Mm -hmm. We're the guys that are responsible for diabetes and heart disease and certain inflammatory cancers. Mm -hmm. Well, know. you know, it may sound silly, um, but I feel that by being so sick, I was blessed mm. because it, you know, it gave me the ability to A, be there for my wife, my kids, and know that I'm helping them grow up and be stronger than they are. Mm. Um, you know, the pleasure that we see when patients come in and then we give them advice that is contrary to what they were told mm -hmm. and simpler and it's easier for them. And just to see them happy and smiling that we've made a difference or that we've actually listened to them and we didn't throw them, throw them off as being kooks and that there is another way. You know, that's my thanks, mm -hmm. and that's that's really why I do this. It's such a pleasure to see this and to go to work and know that we're making a difference. So I've been talking to Dr. Reed Winnick, Dentistry for Health New York, at 120 East 56th Street. I totally recommend his work and to tap into a deeper understanding of who we are as physical, emotional, spiritual beings. Thank, thank you for You're everything. very welcome. Thank you, Alan. And your website? Uh, www.dentistryforhealthny.com. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. This is Alan Steinfeld for New Realities, and if you have any questions, email me at newrealities at earthlink.net and check my website, newrealities.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. That was, that was very good.